Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Cameron Smith and I'm the Sales Director for Sentia UK and Ireland. And I'm joined today by Patrick Lennon from Tourism Island. Patrick is the Content Coordinator for Tourism Island and he is here to present a story of collaboration with other Irish tourism agencies to produce a shared content pool for the promotion of tourism in Ireland. Patrick is going to take you through the journey they took for the implementation of the Sentia Dam platform. Tourism Island have been a Sentia customer for three years and the original case study was shared with me during my interview process with Sentia. And it certainly piqued my interest at the time and it definitely contributed to my decision to join Sentia. So I'm very excited to introduce this presentation today. Tourism Island is a very interesting story and you're going to be treated to some fantastic imagery as part of this presentation today. So please stay tuned. After the presentation, Patrick will be available to answer any questions you may have. And please be aware that there will be a recording of this session available. So without further delay, I'll hand over to Patrick. Thank you, Cameron. And thank you for the opportunity to present here today. Um, the topic on which I'm going to be talking about is Tourism Ireland's growing maturity in Dam. Uh, my name, as Cameron has indicated, is Patrick Lennon, and I work for Tourism Ireland. And my job involves working with a lot of the content uh, that Tourism Ireland generate and generate on behalf of our partners to promote the island of Ireland right across the world. But first of all, let me give you a little bit of an introduction into some of the points that I'll be covering today. Um, first is I'll give you a little introduction into the showcase for Ireland itself. Then we'll have a little talk about the grand project, uh, which uh, for public uh, viewers and users of the DAM system is called Ireland's Content Pool. Then we'll uh, have a look at why we choose a DAM for, uh, to, to manage our content, and also why we've chosen Censure to be our partner on this particular project. Marketing and COVID-19 uh, is a topic that uh, has been at the forefront of a lot of our planning and also a lot of our work over this last year. And I'll touch on that and what the impact has been, uh, particularly on the island of Ireland and uh, the industry here, tourism industry. And then we'll look at some of the enhancements and innovations that we're working with at the moment um, with Censure to improve the functionality and to improve the dam system that we have and then I'll also then look at the end at some of the stats for the usage of the down system that we have, and also look at some of the future developments that we're looking to introduce later this year. The down partnering uh, that we have done um, over this last eight years um, has been very important, uh, both to Tourism Ireland and our partners on this particular project. The, uh, Insights I'm going to give you now just explain a little bit about who we are as Tourism Ireland, but also who our partners are and the scope of which we work to in terms of the geographical areas. So as Tourism Ireland, we are the body that markets the island of Ireland overseas. That's to the rest of the world. That's uh, everywhere outside of the island of Ireland. So we have offices in 20 locations around the world. Um, in various countries. We also have agencies that work on our behalf in other countries. And our main role is to encourage people to travel to the island of Ireland on a holiday. Our partner has for the dam over this last number of years has been Fauncher Ireland. They're the product development uh, organization for uh, the Republic of Ireland. And their remit is very much in the Republic of Ireland, though they do market uh, for homestay uh, holidays to the whole island of Ireland. And for the dam that we have at the moment, our third partner is Tourism Northern Ireland. Again, as, the, as their name suggests, they're based in the north of Ireland. They're a tourism product development organization, and they also market as well to the uh, island of Ireland for homestays. And it is very much the island of Ireland that um, the content that we have generated that we have collaborated on and that we uh, have hosted within our dam system uh, is uh, focused on. It's all about the island of Ireland and how we can make this a place that people will want to, to come on holiday. Now, the Ireland's Content Pool project uh, was something that was started quite a number of years ago. Uh, we have had um, 
uh, image banks, uh, brand uh, portals in the past, and we have uh, collectively and individually had smaller dam systems. But in terms of this particular project, um, this dam project that we're working with, with Censure, is the biggest collaboration project between the three tourism organisations across the island of Ireland. Um, the content that's hosted on our dam and distributed via the dam is a great support to Tourism Ireland and our partners in our efforts to market the island of Ireland. The content pool itself is used daily by Tourism Ireland staff, uh, by our partner staff as well, by the tourism industry here on the island of Ireland, uh, by our trade partners overseas and by media outlets overseas as well. And the new dam system that we have in place with Censure uh, takes Tourism Ireland and our partners into the second generation dams and beyond. And for, uh, for us, we tend at times to talk about the dam system, but we also call it Ireland's content pools become very much a brand in itself, both internally and to our partners right across the world. Now, some of the visuals here, I'll show you of the various portals that we have set up and uh, within this, the dam system. And uh, we have both portals which are um, outward facing for uh, the use of the public, where they can come in and have access to a number of the assets that we have. And we have also internal systems as well, uh, and internal domains that we have set up uh, via Censure. So for Ireland's content pool, which is uh, showcases uh, uh, the uh, assets that are held by uh, Tourism Ireland, Fulch Ireland, and also by Tourism Northern Ireland, and very much is outward, for, outward looking to the whole world is uh, the public portal, Welcome to Ireland's uh, content pool. Uh, for Tourism Northern Ireland to have a bespoke requirement in the north of Ireland to have a separate portal for their home market um, called Northern Ireland's content pool, we have set up a secondary port public portal. And this uh, portal has assets uh, from Tourism Northern Ireland and also those assets which are, uh, have been commissioned and curated on behalf of Tourism Ireland, which feature Northern Ireland, also appear. And as I've said, uh, we have three separate domain areas um, which are branded for each of our uses. And uh, it's across these domains that we're able to share the content via the functions within Censure and also present those assets to the world via the content pools. Now the benefits from partnering um, are uh, significant and there's something that I want to have a little look at now. Um, as I've mentioned, collaboration between the three sister agencies across the Ireland of Ireland is very important. Um, there are efficiencies, there are cost savings that we can have not just in terms of the dam system itself, but also in terms of our uh, commissioning exercise and the sharing of content. And that's facilitated through the Censure Dam system. Staff from each agency are making up the project team that we have presently, but also were involved in the tendering process in order to acquire a new dam system as well. And the project lead rotates between each organization on an annual basis. So it's a true partnership and true collaboration. Um, one of the benefits of working together meant that we're able to deliver actually the go live on this uh, new version of the content pool during COVID-19 lockdown between March and September last year. And as three organizations together, we sought to choose the best in class digital asset management solution that we could find. And we wanted to make sure that was future proofed as well for our needs going forward over the next five years. The transition that we had uh, introduced um, was done very much in cooperation with the Censure team. And I have to say a big thank you to the team in helping us to transition over 100,000 assets between the old systems that we had and the new system that we have at the moment. And it can be argued, a little bit like a well-known brand of Danish beer, that no project at this scale in traveling tourism has been conceived and delivered. Um, this is one of the great benefits from having partnered. Uh, although we have a lot of assets, although the intricacies of joining up uh, together 
uh, on our new system and making sure that the function meets all our needs was quite involved, but it does mean that something of this nature for the whole island environment, for the industry and for our trade overseas, it's a one-stop shop for the assets that they need as well to market the island environment. Now, why choose a dam uh, system? Um, one of the big benefits is the process improvements. It leads to efficiencies of workflow and reduction in costs. Um, last year, I was asked to speak um, uh, to some DAM students, and I showed them as part of that particular uh, presentation some of the tools that we'd used in the past to um, distribute content right across the world. And we had... Um, we had floppy drives, we had zip drives, we had DVDs, we had um, video actually held on film, and that content was literally boxed up and sent off to various countries around the world. The DAM system allowed us to um, take that uh, particular model, workflow model, and reduce it down into a digital uh, system that people can access wherever they are in the world and can download the assets that they need. It also allows us to store master files that are downloaded in multiple forms. So <clears throat> we can have one master file of the particular content and at point of download, um, people can choose what particular format they work with, which is really, really uh, important and helps to speed up the efficiencies of getting uh, some of our campaigns and promotions to market quickly. Value asset realization via metadata. Metadata is very much the currency of digital assets and um, the value of each individual asset that we have is very much tied into the metadata. And it also means that we have a certain amount of asset security um, and usage as well in terms of the scope of use for each individual asset via the information held in the metadata. Consistency of brand um, <clears throat> means that we have a one-stop shop for all approved content. And that's becoming more and more important uh, in ensuring that the brand message that we have is communicated effectively, not just for Tourism Ireland, but also for our partners as well. And the reduction in time to market, as I hinted at before, we now can do real-time marketing through social media communications via the DAM system that we have and via the access to the assets that are there. And the curation of content from external sources. Um, there's a lot of content held by influencers, by our trade partners, by the industry here in Isle of Ireland, and by creatives, um, collectively sometimes known as user-generated content. And we're able now to be able to curate that content in a meaningful manner and uh, take advantage of it as well in our marketing. And in particular, the increased use of video in the wider marketing communications mix not just for um, <clears throat> adverts that are presented across TV, but also are online, but also throughout social media. Video is becoming very much an important part of the tools that we use to market the end of Ireland. And the brand extension, not just the Ireland brand, but also over this last number of years, Ireland's content pool as a brand in itself has become synonymous with quality content. And that's something that we want to uphold in our relationship with Censure and that we want to develop over the next number of years. So in choosing Censure and the Censure Dam, um, we have to understand that Tourism Ireland and our two partner organizations, Fulch Ireland and Tourism Northern Ireland, are public sector bodies, we're public sector agencies. So therefore we're required to retender on a regular basis for any procured services that we have and we have to do so in compliance with public procurement guidelines. Now, it's an onerous task that, uh, to go out to a full public tender, but the process also affords Tourism Ireland and our partners the opportunity to review, in particular for the dam, our dam requirements, and to seek an enhanced system offering. So Censure was very good. They um, tendered, as, along with a number of other dam suppliers, and the reasons now here are for uh, an insight into why we chose Censure Dam over others. The video asset management, i.e. Uh, transcoding of video and download into different codecs and formats, was very important. Um, <clears throat> in the past, I'll give you an insight. Uh, 
we actually had to upload nine different formats of video into a previous down that we had. Um, uh, the formats were um, included uh, those codecs and formats that various media organizations around the world would use, and also were converted into the different frame rates that are used, uh, such as PAL or NTSC in different parts of the world. So that was an onerous task and a costly task. Now we upload one version of a video uh, and where people who, who want to use that video are able to download into the different codecs and formats that they need. This is a big saving both in time and efficiency. Uh, we also required a DAM solution with a powerful and tried application programming interface or API, REST API, and that's what Sensure had because integrating the DAM system uh, is very much uh, a part of maturing in the use of DAM, as uh, the title of this presentation indicates. And that's something that we really wanted to explore, particularly um, over the next uh, couple of years and try to integrate our DAM system into other types of marketing software and marketing um, technology software that we're using. And greater control of asset security via user access management. Um, the web client portal and the public portals that we have allow us to differentiate between different types of users and therefore manage the security of access. And the domain setup also helps us do that as three separate partners. We each have our own domain within Censure, but we were able to share across those domains. And the, the web client uh, port allows us to promote the collaboration that we have been talking about and that we seek as uh, a means to ensure that we have the correct content available and that we're able to share that content with our partners as well. And Grow Maturity in DAM as organized, has enabled us to move, as I mentioned before, to DAM 2.0 or a second generation DAM with Censure. So the, I've been talking a lot about content and now I'm gonna show you some of that content in the form of images. Um, this has been Bulba Mountain County Sligo, and these are some of the iconic locations that we have around the world. This is Blarney Castle in County Cork, where um, if you kiss the Blarney Stone, uh, you're given the gift of eloquence. And um, I haven't, I've been to Blarney a number of times, but I haven't actually kissed the stone, um, which uh, if this presentation, if I had kissed the stone, this presentation might actually be an awful lot longer than it is. So we'll have to see about that. But um, these are iconic locations, as I've said. Carrickery Rope Bridge is just a few miles out the road from where I'm living at the moment. It's a spectacular um, landscape and seascape. And for those who have um, the courage to walk across a very, very slim rope bridge to the island, it's well worth the experience. Uh, Cliffs of Moor, again, uh, somewhere that's very st uh, stunning on the west coast of Ireland that a lot of people go and visit. And this particular image was taken on an evening in the summer where there's a lot of stormy clouds and gives a very powerful impression uh, of the experience that you would get when you go there. Um, quieter uh, part of Ireland, but no less picturesque is uh, Connemara. And this is uh, Derry Clare Lock with the Benz mountain range in the, in the background, a uh, beautiful place to visit. And um, on the islands of Ireland that are dotted around the coastline, uh, Dunangus is a former fort, um, which has been ravaged actually over the, over the centuries by the pounding waves of the Atlantic Ocean. It started off being a round fort, but um, the storms and the waves have uh, eroded at least the, 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 the half of the fort that uh, used to be right next to the cliffs. And you only see a part of it there now. What a spectacular place to come to. And every couple of years, Red Bull comes along and does um, has a diving um, uh, competition off these cliffs into a natural pool of water. More so there, them than me. I'm not sure if I would have the courage to do that, but um, spectacular nonetheless. Um, again, the uh, Dunluce Castle just out the road for me as well, the scene of a lot of different films. Um, and also uh, a beautiful in the cell with the white rocks in the background. And you'll see there as well, off to the right, there is um, the Royal Port Rush Golf Club where the Open was held just a couple of years ago. Some smaller intimate places we have here in the island as well, is Garnish Island down in County Cork. 
Um, it is an island. The experience of going across on a small ferry takes you past some little islands and islets where the seals uh, bask and uh, have become very photogenic. Um, they know when the ferry is coming and are happy to play for the audiences uh, of people who are taking some photographs and selfies. And uh, one of my own images uh, is actually taken just out along the coastline here. It shows the beautiful sunsets that you have along the beaches here on the island of Ireland. So um, very beautiful. And for those who are interested, it's a great place to go sea fishing as well. So let's have a look at how, uh, even with all these wonderful assets that we have available to us in terms of video, which we've seen at the start of this presentation, and the images which we've just had a look at, how uh, COVID-19 has impacted on our opportunities to market and there's the COVID itself. And um, we will have a little look because COVID hasn't just impacted on Tourism Ireland's marketing plans that we have in place, but on the tourism and hospitality industry um, in the wider travel uh, trade right across the world, not just here in the island of Ireland. Um, the, um, the confinements, the lockdowns that we've had to undertake, uh, the isolation, the social distancing and the ban on travel that we've had has hit this particular industry very hard. And for Tourism Ireland and our partners, um, what we've been trying to do is very much um, keep the island of Ireland top of mind uh, to our audience uh, as a holiday destination through what we call the Fill Your Heart with Ireland social media campaign, uh, which is extensively used assets from the dam itself. Um, the Fill Your Heart with Ireland campaign has also provided a platform both for cultural communities here in the island of Ireland and the wider tourism industry to communicate with and grow their audience even during this uh, COVID-19. And that's very much been facilitated both to the industry and also through the media through the use of assets via the dam. A number of TV programs, uh, documentaries and, and other um, uh, fictional fact-based programs are meant to be filmed here in the island of Ireland over this last year. And um, some of them were able to go ahead, some of them were not because of the lockdowns that we had, but uh, the media and those filmmakers were able to make great use of the B-roll assets, for example, that we had within the, the dam system, uh, which meant that they were able to go to the broadcast, broadcast dates for the programs um, and meet those dates uh, basically through using our assets. And that was very, very good. It gave us a lift and it meant that the uh, programs went out on time and we were able to incorporate that into our marketing. Uh, St. Patrick's Day this year um, was a great opportunity for us to just to reach out to our full audience around the world. Uh, St. Patrick's Day is March 17th each year and that's when people who are part of what we call the Irish diaspora, people who have, uh, have travelled the world, um, who are now in far from places, or who've had um, some link uh, through their ancestors back to Ireland, or even those people who just like being Irish for the day. Um, and we're able to roll out a very program this year just to keep um, interest in St. Patrick's Day and interest in Ireland um, very much in people's minds. And the Greenings, uh, which is a initiative that started about 12 years ago in Australia, and has grown over the years. We thought that this year, because of COVID, it would be a little bit uh, less impactful, but we actually had over 650 landmark sites around the world go green on St. Patrick's Day this year, which is absolutely fantastic. They saw this as an opportunity uh, themselves, even during COVID, to show that they, at some point, they will be open for business. And it, it, was, um, uh, it was a surprise for us but uh, a welcome one that we're able to um, include all 650 landmark sites in our greetings, but also be able to tell the world that this was happening as well on St. Patrick's Day. And <clears throat> lastly, the Fill Your Heart with Ireland campaign will continue through this year ahead, hopefully, of a kickstart um, program and campaign to maybe take advantage of the pent up demand for travel amongst our overseas audience. We're hoping that will take place and in the coming weeks, uh, if we're given the green light from government, uh, we'll be able to maybe open the borders a little, open the travel uh, routes and start to at least think about uh, moving out of COVID and inviting people to come here 
on holiday again, which we're all looking forward to. Now, enhancements with Censure. Um, I want to just have a little look at some of the, of the um, developments that we've made from the basic Censure product that we uh, purchased off the shelf and that we're tailoring for our specific use. Um, and the highlights of some of the things that we've done over this last year in working with Censure are integration, for example, with the Adobe Bridge uh, software program, which allows for the metadata templates within Adobe Bridge to be used um, and to be mapped back into Censure again. So uh, this allows us as part of a commissioning workflow to provide our creatives with the templates in Adobe Bridge where they apply the metadata uh, before it even comes into Tourism Ireland on our partners. And when that comes in, we are adding value uh, at that point when we upload that into Censure. And then uh, the metadata then will be applied at each stage of the asset life cycle as we go through into our campaign and journey management as well. So this is um, the first of the integrations that we're making with the Censure DAM into the Adobe Bridge product, but we're also making others as well. So this has been successful and will be piloted on the new commissions that we undertake over the next few months. Um, one of the big areas in terms of managing content and managing assets um, is about review and expiry. And particularly with curated content, uh, we wanna make sure that uh, we're notified when assets are coming up for review. And this is something that we've included and that uh, it will be of great benefit because in the coming uh, year or two, we have a number of assets which are due to expire or where we have the opportunity to extend licenses and having those notifications ahead of time into the admin, admins uh, will be very, very useful. And then also something that we've worked on, particularly tied in with our taxonomy and the categories we use to manage some of the uh, assets that we have are hierarchical keywords, uh, which we're moving to uh, the public portal as well to help improve the search options that people have available to them. And some other work that we are looking to do is custom filters, uh, which allows us to show certain statistics through stored searches. Um, gender neutral registration form for access to public portal, not everyone um, identifies um, with the traditional um, forms of, of reference, and we wanted to make sure that that was in place. Um, automatic renewal of URL certificates, something that's very important each year, particularly for those um, URLs which reference our portals, and we didn't want to get hung up on some of the, uh, uh, the paperwork and time it takes to get those certificates in place. And we've also looked at developing a map which uh, ties into the GPS coordinates for all the media assets. Um, and that map is presented at the moment within the web plan purely for internal staff. But at some point in the future, we're looking to um, move it into the portals as well uh, when we come to uh, update the user interface and it will be another means of uh, reference, particularly a visual means for people um, when they're looking for assets to be able to hone in on a particular asset group that refers to a particular region or geography on the island of Ireland. And one of the big um, advances that we've made this year, particularly is in terms of the hosting costs and storage costs that we have and working with Censure directly, working with Censure team to find optimizations and whatever savings we make in this area is plowed back into the enhancements that we're making overall within the Century system. And it's all about the content. And this is not a little pause time just to show you a little bit more of some of the great content that we have. Um, this particular um, view is at the very north of Ireland, the northest tip of Iron Man Head. And this was the place where the Star Wars film um, of the last series was filmed. And uh, we now have lots of um, people who are interested in Star Wars coming and uh, visiting this particular location. As you can see, it's quite spectacular. It's almost like the edge of the world. And not far south from Mallinghead is Oracle Mountain. And this is just a great image. It's in the, the winter when the mountain's covered in snow and ice. 
and uh, the reflection on the lake just below is absolutely stunning. And uh, you can actually climb this mountain. It's not a difficult climb, but when you do, you're literally looking over most of the whole of the north of the island. It's absolutely a beautiful place to be standing up there. But I do admit, you do need to bring a coat, um, not just in winter, but also in summer, just in case the weather turns, as it always does in Ireland. And this particular uh, part of the world where I used to come from, I live on the north coast now, but I'm originally from an area called County Down, or the Kingdom of Down as it's known. And the more mountains actually are uh, there in the backdrop, uh, absolutely beautiful, uh, great walking country as well. And uh, the area close to it uh, is called Murloc Reserve. Uh, the ponies come and are, are let out just to graze and keep. But at this time of the year, spectacularly, this is why I included it, the beds of bluebells are delivery carpet the whole area. And it's absolutely stunning. And on a really good day, um, you'll have every photographer in the country going down trying to take a shot just like this one. So lastly, just to give you a little insight in terms of how the dam system is used by ourselves. Um, at the moment, we have quite a lot of assets in archive and, and that there, but we're freeing up over 42,000 assets for people to use. Uh, of that, 32,000 are images and over 7,000 are videos. And the breakdown that we have is mainly JPEGs, TIFFs, EPS, MPEGs4 in terms of mine types. Um, but we also have currently over 21,000 assets in our account that are being reviewed at the minute and having metadata applied to them or reapplied to them or updated. And just to give you a little visual, this is, uh, these are the main mine types that we have in. JPEGs make up uh, a large part, even though they're a lossy format, but they're very, very useful in terms of uh, social media uh, outreach, uh, which JPEGs are perfect for that. Um, but it just gives you a little insight into the into the mine types that we have and the volumes that we're working with at the moment. Though those are due to increase, uh, we have a lot more uh, assets to move into the dam system, and we hope to have upwards of eighty to hundred thousand assets by the beginning of next year. Um, statistics on users is quite interesting. We have around 400 odd internal staff in agencies um, that are contracted to us using the system. Um, but we have over 7,000 public portal users. That's through Ireland's content pool and Northern Ireland's content pool. Um, <clears throat> and the public portal users are from all over the world. Um, and even just this year in March, over 2,000 people registered this year uh, during March as part of the um, response to the campaign that we ran around St. Patrick's Day and others. So we're starting to see, particularly uh, coming out of COVID a little bit, that people are more interested and the industry or across the world now is more interested um, in starting to run um, marketing campaigns and promotions. Um, and this is a direct result. They're coming in, they're using the content available. Um, the breakdown is, and I've uh, just indicated here by user type and industry, um, and I've pulled out media there, it's just quite high, tourism industry, a great use, travel trader around the world as well, advertising, design, and other government agencies as well. So quite a mixed bag of uh, public users, but um, this tends to adjust to different times of the year, media at certain times, more tourism industry at others but it just shows you a little bit of the, the type of people that are using our system. And um, of those, in terms of breakdown by country, most is in Ireland, and then we have different people from around the world uh, in different markets. I'll just run through those. Um, some of them are established markets around the world, such as Australia, uh, Belgium, uh, Denmark, France, from their European markets. Others are more emerging, like India and Japan. Um, and still others are very close to home, which are more the United Kingdom and also quite a large number of people in the US as well uh, would use the system. Uh, this is just a little bit of indication breakdown by country, but we do have some quite unusual um, uh, countries taking an interest, for example, and individuals taking an interest. Um, just to give you three interesting countries, we've had three people come in from Mongolia, um, uh, one from the Bahamas, one from American Samoa, and we've also had someone from the Antarctic actually uh, sign up to 
and download some assets. Um, so we're, we're, we're in every continent in the world, we have users of our system, which is quite interesting. And I volunteered, by the way, to be the first person um, uh, to sign up to, uh, to work in our market office in the Bahamas if we ever, ever actually open one there. Um, upcoming projects, just to let you know, um, we're looking to upgrade to one of the, the newer version of the Censure software release at some point in the next few months. We have, as Tourism Northern Ireland, looked to integrate um, the Simple View CMS system that they're using for their consumer website, and that's uh, running at the moment. Uh, as Tourism Ireland, we're also uh, going to be integrating with a Sitecore CMS interface for our new Ireland.com website, consumer-facing website. Um, we're also looking to see if we can develop a model release app. Uh, it's in discovery at the moment, and we're going to be releasing funds in the next couple of weeks. Uh, with GDPR, um, <clears throat> there's a need to have a, a more digital workflow for the releases that we have, such as model releases, location releases, and, and other types of forms um, that were available. So. This is something that we're interested in um, and something that we'll look to develop over the next six months. Uh, reporting dashboards are very important to us and we're looking to see if we can tailor those for partner use. And Censure are working very closely on this. It's an area that we feel uh, Censure could do more in. Um, we're uh, looking at ways in which we can take the information that there is in the back end of the Censure system and make it a little bit more visible for us to use. Uh, we also have a new content process. We're working with a partner called OMD. It's very much targeting marketing to the individual uh, rather than um, target marketing to large groups. So uh, we're looking to see how the new DAM system and the content that it contains can actually integrate with that. And uh, we've also developed, and particularly with our partners, are looking to develop the new media room or media hub functionality for curated content upload. That uh, will come from our industry here in the end of Ireland, from creatives such as uh, photographers, and videographers, and drone operators, and also from user generated content. And that's going to be released uh, through our partner, Fulch Ireland, in the next couple of weeks. So, the main goal in terms of our down maturity and coming to the end of the presentation now, I'll um, just outline a few things. Um, the Airlines Content Pool or DAM allows for the visualization marketing assets employed through the full range of communication channels to assure and reassure the prospective visitor that it's worthwhile to make the purchase of a holiday to the island of Ireland. That's our main goal. Um, in working with uh, DAM strategy uh, with Tourism Ireland and our partners, the ambition uh, promotes a greater integration of our DAM into our marketing communications technology which will help us reach, reach that wider audience in real time, right in the moment, with individually targeted messages. And that's what our main goal is and that's what we're rolling out at the moment as, an organi as organizations uh, in cooperation with Censure. And uh, what we want to get to is have the great content that we have in which we've been showing you today in the presentation, supported by the DAM system and allied with inspiring communications, will allow Tourism Ireland to project the Ireland brand to the world. And that's our main goal. And that's hopefully something that we're going to realize through the damn maturity that we've developed over this last number of years and working with Censure and the functionality of the dam that they're able to bring to the table and that we are able to use. So I'll just show you, just, I'll just skip back in to a few of the images that we have. Uh, this is an image of Sybil Head down in Dingle. And this is actually where Star Wars was partly filmed as well. But it's an absolutely beautiful place. And if you ever get a chance to visit the Dingle Peninsula, you won't be disappointed at all. It's a place I love myself. Uh, that's one of the pictures I've taken, actually. Um, Clue Bay in County Mayo. Um, I'd shown you a little earlier uh, about the mountains and the bends of, of Connemara. And, and uh, these are a little bit further north again in Mayo. And this particular bay and the views over it, there's a thousand islands here. Uh, some of them are occupied, some of them are for holiday homes, but um, it's absolutely beautiful, particularly on a good day. And then lastly, we uh, have uh, Titanic in Belfast, one of the biggest uh, draws for visitors, particularly in the north of Ireland. 
and uh, one that uh, is due to reopen again uh, in the coming weeks um, and one that we're hoping to uh, over the next uh, second half of the year invite lots of people to come and visit again.